Hey everybody, Chris from Brushwood Minis here and welcome to episode 4 of my series covering the figures from Awakened Realms Nemesis Lockdown. So, I'm going to be bringing a few changes to the series and if you like them then leave a comment down below and you know the rest. Today we're going to be looking at the janitor and we're going to have a quick little look at the character art. <sighs> Apart from looking like some sort of American convict, you can see he's predominantly in some very orange coveralls. Something that if you take a quick look at a miniature cabinet here, you can see I'm not overly experienced in actually painting. So this is a bit of a learning curve for both of us. I've already given the figure a Xenophil Prime with a dry brush as usual, and I'll throw a link above for you to check out how I've done that in the past. And all the paints that I use, I'm going to throw up onto the screen now. So if you want to, just hit pause and make a quick note of them, though they'll be in the video description below as usual. We'll be moving from this nice Prime onto hopefully this finished coloured figure. There'll be timestamps in the description, so feel free to jump ahead, check them out. But other than that, let's jump straight over to the desk and start to get some color onto him. So to kick off, I'll be using Decayed Metal to coat in the base, as we have the null pass. And as you can see, I'm literally just flooding that. I am not caring one iota about coverage or whatever. I'm going to be hitting it with a wash later, which could be roughly two parts non oil to one part agro surf shade, and that's going to fill all those lovely little dipples up anyway. So, we really haven't got to be that fussy with this. If you do, of course, happen to make any silly little mistakes like I did here by just catching his boots, uh, just dump that back in with a little bit of grey or white, whatever you got to hand. While we're painting metallics, I'm going to use some of Scale Colors Dark Metal to do the shadows of the um pressure washer and bottles uh canister bottles on his back and well not not the rubber uh i'm just going to do these on the shadows and then for the brighter points i'll be using heavy metal which is more of a simple silver color or a base silver color so you could just go straight in with that and just use a wash later i just like to do this to try and build a bit more contrast up on the figure but that is entirely up to you next up i'm going to be painting the face with some gulliman flesh For the beard, I'm going to be using some Griff Charger Grey, which is always great for coating anything that's like hair or nice and textured, you know, something that you want a really desaturated colour in. And the bluest nature of this beard is going to really contrast nicely with that orange outfit when we get around to it. Right, I'm now going to do the boots, and I'm doing a mix of three parts Griff Charger Grey to one part Black Templar. Slightly darker than I usually use, but that's because I want to go for a more blackish blue as opposed to a slightly bluish black if you know what i mean and i'll probably use this for the rubber um piping to the pressure washer as well okay so i'm now going to coat the whole of the jumpsuit in with griffhound orange and as you can see it's a pretty strong color really hope this isn't going to ruin the figure we're going to do this over everything except for the knee pads and the gloves. Yeah, this, this will work. For the gloves, I'm going to be using the same method that I used in the previous video. So I'll be running some snake bite leather into the shadows and then wet blending some skeleton horde onto the upper highlights. I'll then use pure snake bite leather just to coat in the belt. And I've noticed here as well that I forgot to paint in the rubber straps on the back of the knee pad. So I'm just using that blue black mix we made previously. So on the knee pads, I'll also be using skeleton horde and that little patch on his cap will be skeleton horde as well. Okay, so we're nearly done with the base coats here. All I'm going to do is coat in the patch on his left shoulder with some Blood Angels Red. I'll also use this for the regulator on the what I've now decided is actually a flamethrower tanks on his back. And I'll coat in the little canister on the top of the main barrel of the flamethrower as well to add a little bit more of a complementary contrast to this figure. As you may have noticed, I've been trying to stick to pretty much the oranges and the pale yellows because they do complement each other really nicely with only that desaturated blue in the beard to really stand out and bring your attention to the character's face. There is a little method to my madness sometimes. 
and for the metallics I'm going to be hitting them with a pure coat of rattling grime because I really love that dirty metal look that we discovered in the last episode. So, there's nothing stopping us from saying that the figure is now done at this point. It's got some perfectly good colours on there and you can easily get away with using it on the tabletop. If however you want to push it up a little bit further though, join me now as we go and add some highlights. So, the first thing I'm going to highlight up here is going to be the face and I'm going to be using Cadian Flesh Tone for the mid-tone and Kisler Flesh for the absolute brightest points. Now there's hardly anything here to actually highlight so it's really just the cheekbones and the nose. And the more I look at this figure, the more I see that I can probably actually get away with putting some eyes in. So we're going to move on to doing them in a moment. Before then coming in with the pure kiss of the flesh right on the tip of the nose and the cheekbone. So I've got a little bit of ivory on the tip of my brush here and you can see that I've got a really fine point with this size too. And I'm just going to gently apply that over the eyeballs where I think they are. They're not actually particularly well sculpted on this figure. Then hold on my breath for dear life as I thin down some black and dot in some pupils. For the jumpsuit itself we're going to come in with some really simple highlights. So first of all we'll be using some Fire Dragon Bright. So I'm using Citadel colours purely because I have a lot of Citadel colours and I figure that they're most readily available across the sort of global market. They wouldn't be my go-to choice and I'm not a massive fan of the pots so basically what I'm saying is use whatever colours you prefer, do not take what I say as gospel. Anyway, we're going to pick out all of those raised edges across the figure, leaving that Grifthound orange in all of those recesses. When we're done with the Fire Dragon Bright, we'll then edge highlight and pick out the absolute brightest points on the upper half of the figure, not the lower half of the figure, which is mainly in shadow. And we'll be using the Luganaf orange for this. That will be for like the peak of the cap, the very tips of the shoulders, that kind of thing. I'm then going to use some Wild Rider Red to highlight up the emblem on his shoulder. I'm not going to be particularly fussy with this. I'm not going to see it that much anyway. And the mini's not particularly well sculpted. I'm then going to switch to pure Fenrisian grey for all those black areas like the tips of the boots, the rubber on the back of the knees and the rubber hosings. So then for the knee pads and gloves I'm going to be using Fire Brown by Scale Colour purely because I really love the matte finish and that will offer a different texture on the figure. You could always use something like Ushabti Bone if you so wish. You'll see that I'm drawing the highlights up towards the top of the knee pads as I'm doing this purely because I want to try and build those layers of light towards the top and keep that shadow recess down the bottom of the figure. And I'll also use this to pick out the fingertips and just the upper sort of creased ridges of the gloves as well. Coming back in with the Mojave White to pick out the extreme highlights, so the upper corners and the fingertips and the knuckles. And then we'll be using some Speed Metal, which is a really, really bright silver from Scale Color, to add some scratches, edge highlights, and general glints and shines onto the tanks of the flamethrower and the barrel itself. So we're coming towards the end now and we'll be hitting the base with the usual wash of two parts known oil to one part Agrax Earthshade. And then we'll have to let that completely dry for around about 20 minutes, so go and have a cup of tea. When that has dried you can come back and give it a dry brush with some riser rust as we did in the previous episodes, followed by a little bit of weathering with some neolac oxide. When everything is dried and we've painted the base room a nice matte black, and then we can hit the whole figure with a coat of ultra matte varnish. That is of course completely optional, it's entirely up to you, I just prefer it to the waxy finish that you get from the contrast paints and it does offer a bit of protection to the figures while they're in the box and being played with. But as I say, totally your choice. Well that was pretty easy wasn't it? 
quite simple quick color scheme just a few highlights just to throw on there if you really want to but overall you get a really lovely tabletop figure for not a lot of effort just exactly what we always want so i hope you really enjoyed the guide and as always click the bell button so you're notified when the next content drops onto the channel which will probably end up being the creepers looking in the mini cabinet just sat here but until next time folks i'll say bye for now and leave you with a few out shots <laughs>